Hello, my name is Dante Renee, and welcome to the 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page, where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Like tonight's film, 1974's Schoolgirl Report Volume 8. This is Volume 8 in the series put out by Impulse Pictures. You can see the back of the DVD here. I believe they are uh, part of Synapse. And the tagline for this film is at the top. What Parents Must Never Know. And incidentally, this is the first tagline in the Schoolgirl Report series uh, that I've seen that is actually utilized as a plot point in the film and is actually spoken in the film. If you want to see the other Schoolgirl Report uh, reviews and uh, some basic uh, core points on the series, check out all my other reviews on this YouTube page. I reviewed the other seven so far, and I'll be looking at all the rest of them in the series. So this is part eight, so let's dive in. Now, as for all of the parts, I have to do notes, I have to write notes because these films really act as anthology films in many regards, meaning that there are many different stories and uh, there is an overriding story behind all of them. So in many regards, as I've said before, uh, sexploitation and horror tend to be the two genres that can do a lot of multiple stories in a film, anthology film type uh, deals, and this series is definitely a hallmark in uh, the sexploitation erotica genre of film um, that would utilize uh, multiple stories. So I have some notes here written down, so don't mind if my eyes uh, are moving around uh, a little bit. But this is a very unique concept for part eight, because in part eight we have an over, the kind of, uh, uh, the, this, the, the overriding, the, the, the story that is continuing throughout the film um, is a story of a bunch of girls on a bus and they are taking a trip and they're presumably high school and they're taking a trip all together and there are some teachers with them including one new teacher and what is so interesting is that the anthology of stories is bred out of this bus trip of the girls themselves talking in the bus uh, for the duration of the trip and talking to each other about different sexual uh, stories. And these are the stories that make up this film. So quite different than other schoolgirl report films where we have kind of a older people uh, discussing, uh, you know, clinical sexual studies of, of schoolgirls in, 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 or a particular school or so on and so forth. In this one, we just have the girls themselves in the back of a bus. And what we don't realize is that this overriding story that takes place, you know, throughout the film and, and will actually have a lot to do with the climax of the film and the conclusion of the story. So very interesting stuff. Now when we look at the first story um, in this film, um, we have it about a girl seducing a guy. Um, a younger guy. So we have a schoolgirl kind of seducing a guy around her age. A younger guy. So very unique in that concept as well because other films in the series will typically have them seducing an older man. Now in this particular story I found it to be really interesting because we had a Christina Lindbergh poster which is actually I believe the cover of the film um, I, or it might be her penthouse photo or it might be a cover of one of her films. But it looked very familiar to me, and it's utilized in the story. And it's interesting because Christina Lindbergh was in one of the Schoolgirl Report films uh, that I reviewed um, previously. I forget which volume, but maybe two or three, something like that. Um, and we have some really wild sound effects in this particular story, like sound effects that I was not prepared for at all. Um, sound effects involving um, the female body and sexual activity. So really kind of wild, wacky sound effects in this particular story. Um, in this particular story, we have... Um, male masturbation. We have a male boner, real male boner, through his tidy whities um, We have interesting references to Christopher Columbus um, in a sexual manner. And we have uh, outrageous uh, breasts from the lead girl in this film, in this particular story. Um, and we also have an insane line involving um, 
making some sort of crafts out of vagina hair. Yes, this story in particular is is uh, really kicks off the proceedings, and I don't want to give away a ton of things, but what I do is I give you pieces to kind of give you a little bit of an idea of these stories. Um, with all the stories in this series, um, the sex is, there's humping, it's very hot and heavy, some of the most sexploitation-y, adult-y, erotic-y in the whole series so far, I thought. Um, now, then we get back to the overriding story, and the bus stops for a little bit, so the girls in the bus telling stories stops, and then we get into another story involving a girl on the bus, and her sexual relationship and loss and uh, loss of virginity and also uh, the results of her sexual activity and um, in terms of pregnancy and such and this one is interesting because it really brings in a lot of ties of romantic love and a committed male who's not just in it for the sex but actually some sort of committed type of love now in the next story we have a story about a prude older teacher and the students in her classroom you know constant double entendres the teacher is trying to teach them about um, plants and beans and cucumbers and the students are constantly making it sexual and in this in this story we have um, the girls trying to get their teacher laid and they find an interesting young man um, and what starts to happen in here is we have uh, a bet we have um, a crazy setup to get there uh, involving punching and buying a motorcycle in a, in a fight um, we have an extremely wild and like viciously animalistic sex scene in this particular story um, and we have um, I'm looking at my notes here um, we have a book of erect men like a pornography book and you're seeing the pictures of erect penises of uh, younger guys in the book that's in this story as well insane wild stuff going on here we have another story the next one involves two female cousins skinny dipping at a lake this one gets crazy there's an old man involved there's uh clothing and lack thereof and then where they get other clothing um in this story we have uh, two younger guys. We have a lot of usage of slow motion on these two cousins, which reminded me of some of the Six Swedes films uh, by Erwin C. Dietrich. This particular story really reminded me a lot of the style and the story-wise and the, just the style of the Erwin C. Dietrich Six Swedes films. Even the look, it's very sunny outside. The talking in this story is insane. It's crazy. There's talk of... Um, I mean, the dialogue in this whole film is is very adult. You know, they use the word pussy, tits, dick, all of that. And in this particular story, we have talk about the way your pussy feels in lake water. Um, talk of big tits or small tits and what guys like. Um, guys fighting and threatening to grab the other guy's balls. Uh, this is some insane stuff. And in this particular story, we have a real silent movie, hijinks, old time type of vibe. Fast paced at times, crazy hijinks, comedy at times, really, really wild. And amazing butt shots in this particular story throughout this entire film there are amazing um you know breast shots butt shots leg shots um vagina shots all of that nothing is too explicit um it, it all seems simulated but it's very hot and heavy simulated if you catch my drift it's definitely that line between softcore and hardcore uh, but you're not getting any any shots that are overly explicit you know uh, franco wise uh, gynecologically wise if you catch my drift now we have another story where a girl gets involved with her dad's boss for reasons um really 
based on her love for her father. And this particular one has one of the wildest, hottest, heaviest pool table um, softcore sexploitation scenes I've, I've seen. Even involving some face in the ass a little bit. Um, we have a crazy outside sequence in this particular story. And we also have a bit of uh, broken hearts in this particular story involving age. We have a much older man in this particular one who's also married, uh, but we have some very uh, honest and almost comical portrayals of the differences between the older and the younger. Even though it's sexy and hot and everything else, the real physical, social, emotional differences, and actually mostly physical differences um, through time. The last story of this movie is so it really sets this volume eight apart from the rest of the schoolgirl report films because this one takes the overriding bus trip story and that's how it spends the last 20 minutes of the film is with the overriding story. And in this story, what's so interesting is that the bus stops at a hostel and one of the girl's stories that was spoken of collides with the overriding story now when the bus stops. We have a twist in this story um, in, involving an attorney, involving two girls and fighting with each other um, and the unknown. We have weird sexual references involving cows, a drawing of a cow with a huge penis. Um, we have a field man who tends to the cows who's, who's vulgar and hilarious. Um, and we have an amazing bikini art school shot outside on the grass. Really reminded me once again of the Six Weeds films by Erwin C. Dietrich. Um, so I don't want to give away too many things, but there is a twist and there's a lot of complexity in that overriding story and how the climax of the film happens. In terms of the music of this film, this is wall-to-wall -wall music, but it's almost like very much so in the background at times. It's very interesting how much so in the background it is, but there's so much, I found there to be so much more music in volume eight than the first seven volumes so far. And the music sometimes is like big band, old, uh, barbershop type music and then we have some really um, you know some blues and some funk and grooves but blues based in some ways and some of the strangest 70s synth sounds I've heard in a groovy weird 70s exploitation type of way so some great music throughout that really sets the tone of the particular stories um, in terms of the sexuality of the film, you have full frontal and back uh, from girls. Um, really didn't see much of... Oh, no, what am I saying? Yes, and and guys as well, especially that, that book in the classroom. Um, <clears throat> and the sex is extremely erotic. Uh, all of the girls are sexually attractive in this film in different ways. I would say maybe um, the all the volumes have it like that but this one is intense and the sexual scenes are humping and wild and crazy and very very erotic and very very hot and heavy um the hottest and heaviest you know really resembling a sexploitation film a standard sexploitation film out of the schoolgirl report series really uh, some of the finest sexploitation in this film i've seen um and this film deals with um the issues of schoolgirl vitality and allowing them to be who they are and they're not as aggressive as uh, they seem to be even though one of the stories in this film deals with what happens if you say no to a girl because it's constantly the younger girls being aggressive and taking the lead. Is this film feminist in that regards? Thank you so much and good night.